and Christmas season is almost here and of course prime rib tenderloin is a big part of a lot of people's holidays and right now we do have a tenderloin here I want to show you how to work this is about a three pound tenderloin uh, what we're doing is about a, about a half a pound per person when you're getting ready to ask the butcher uh, how much of a tenderloin do you need. And this is for me about for about six people. Uh, five to six people, you know, you never want to run out for your guests, especially during a holiday season or a special event. Now, when you get this tenderloin, you can ask the meat cutters. They'll have it all nice and trimmed for you. You can get one untrimmed if you want to, but it's just easier to have the cutters do it. Um, now, what you, when you get the tenderloin, you're going to find it where you have a piece of meat that has a very thin piece down here and very thick here on this end. Now, if I was going to roast this in the oven, what I would end up with is this thinner piece down here would get cooked faster than our thicker piece down here. So what I want to do is actually make this pretty much equal all the way around. So the way you do that is to take the thin piece and you pretty much just fold it over like that till you have more of an even even size. Now to hold that in place go get some butcher's twine and this is really easy to do. Just take some butcher's twine and keep the, keep the reason you're doing all of this is to make sure this is all even so it cooks evenly. Now the butchers in the meat market they can make it nice and pretty because they do that all the time and just feel free to ask them if you want but just make a nice little simple knot there. It doesn't have to be very fancy but keep in mind, the whole reason I'm doing this is just to get more even cooking on it. So, this is going to be more even here. I might take another piece here, along this piece here that's kind of not all together, and tie another knot here to kind of hold that together. And see how that piece is right there? I may take this piece of twine, pull it in here like this one more time, and make another knot. Like I said, there's nothing really magical about this. It's just making sure that this piece of meat looks as even as possible when you get ready to cook it. Now, after the string is in there, let's just cut some of these strings off. There we go. All right, now what I'm going to do is just like I did with the prime rib, I'm going to season this with some olive oil and some of the prime rib and steak seasoning and our roasted garlic seasoning. Now, this olive oil is our Ottavio olive oil. This is a good pure olive oil to use. So I'm going to rub this down really, really well with the olive oil, get it nice coated, nice good coat on there, on all sides. Okay, then what I have right here is our prime rib and steak seasoning and our roasted garlic. Now, the prime rib and steak seasoning would work on the rub. This is the searing crust. gets a little bit different crust on this. You could have used the exact same thing with the prime rib as well. This nice garlic flavor in here. So I'm going to generously season this beef tenderloin and really get this on all sides. Now, what I'm also going to do is let this beef tenderloin set out because I want it to start coming up the temperature. So I'm going to take the beef tenderloin. And I've already got a pan here ready to go with a rack built. God, I don't want to put it directly on the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to take this tenderloin and set it on the rack. Now I'm going to let this set out for about 30 minutes let it start heating up the temperature. Now what I am going to do while that's happening is take our oven. I'm going to turn our oven up all the way as high, high as it can go. This oven goes to 550 degrees so just take this oven to whatever oven you have, whatever the highest temperature in the oven that you're using, highest temperature. We're going to sear the outside of this just like we did the prime rib. So we'll be back and show you the next step. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. We've allowed this tenderloin to set on the counter to start rising in temperature slowly while it's seasoned. I did season it using our prime rib and steak searing crust and our roasted garlic seasoning on this, some olive oil. Now, what I'm going to do next, this is probably the most important tool besides the beef tenderloin you can have. And this is a probe thermometer. This is the most important thing you can look at as far as the temperature is concerned. Time is a very rough approximation when you're cooking something like this. The temperature is going to be your best 
guide on when you pull it and you get ready to serve. So I'm going to take this probe. I want it the thickest part of the meat. And now, I have my oven heating up over here at 550 degrees. So I'm going to take the beef tenderloin and place it in this really searing hot oven for about 15 to 20 minutes to let the outside sear. So, as you can see right here, the internal part of this, temp this beef tenderloin right now is about 52 degrees. So we'll be back in a little bit and show you the next step after this tenderloin is seared. And we're back. It's been about 10 minutes I've had this tenderloin in this really, really hot oven to sear. I do want you to see this. Okay. It's got a nice, pretty sear coat on it. Temperature-wise, it's about 105, 110 degrees internal temperature right now. Now, one thing you want to do is make sure your temperature probe is in a good location. So you might want to take it out and kind of move it a little bit. You want to get the temperature probe where the temperature reading starts to drop maybe a little bit. Because if you have the temperature probe in the wrong location, you may be getting a misreading because that's the hotter part of the meat. So what I've done now is actually take the oven down to 250 degrees. Okay. Now I'm going to take this tenderloin, stick it back in the oven, finish roasting it. We're going to take it out at about 125, 130 degrees, and we'll have a beautiful beef tenderloin. All right, we're back. Uh, it's 132 degrees on the internal of this uh, beef tenderloin. Now this has been about 20, 25 minutes. As a rough estimate for this, you want to have about um, about 8 to 10 minutes per pound on this one. Now, the whole time of this is going to also include the searing time of this as well. So, I'm going to show you this great beef tenderloin. Now, one thing you might want to do too is make sure the thermometer is in a spot where you've got the thickest part. So, when you're checking your temperature, you might want to move the thermometer around to make sure you're in the thickest part. So let's cut into this beef tenderloin and see how it looks. All right. Okay, there we go. We have a nice, beautiful, medium rare on this beef tenderloin. Took it out at about 133, 134 degrees. It'll rest for a little bit. It'll continue to go up. But here is a wonderful beef tenderloin. Uh, now what we did as a seasoning one more time was our Ottavio olive oil. We used our prime rib and steak searing crust and our garlic seasoning, just blended those 50-50. Coated this really well. We did tie up, tie up the ends, because keep in mind, I do want these thinner pieces to cook more evenly, so that's why I tied those up. But this is a great beef tenderloin, top off with really a good horseradish sauce, either the toasted garlic uh, horseradish dip or our onion blossom horseradish sauce and have a wonderful holiday. And thanks again for shopping here at HEB.